Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start uh, sanding down the stock and go ahead and start getting it refinished. Now, I don't have any 150 grit like I said in the last video. I've got some 100 grit, but what I like to use are these contour sanding pads. I get these at Home Depot, but uh, they're a little bit more expensive than uh, regular sandpaper per piece, but they flex and you can just use your hand. And it gives a nice smooth finish and you can go around the contours of the stock and whatnot real well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 100 grit of that, and then I've got a 320 grit, and then I'm going to have to use some 220 grit sandpaper. This is a 3x sandpaper. It's supposed to last a little bit longer. I find that it works a little bit better than normal sandpaper, like this right here. But either way you want to go, I mean sandpaper, sandpaper, you know some people. But that's going to be for the sanding part. Now to actually uh, start refinishing, you're going to need some tack cloth. And what this is going to do is going to get some of that residual um, dust left over from the sanding off of the stock in between finishes and you know and when you start the stain and whatnot. Uh, you're going to need some cheesecloth again. This is just what I use to stain with and apply the oil. Seems to be pretty good. You know, it leaves a little bit of dust, but uh, it it works all right. Now, my uh, method of finishing is with a uh, pre-stained wood conditioner first after sanding. Now, what this is going to do is help the stain soak in a little bit more evenly and it's going to avoid like a blotchiness and then you know what I use is just a good oil based wood stain Minwax is you know my weapon of choice I've got two different colors here this is gunstock it's a little bit lighter color and then special walnut which is a darker color and what I used to finish and seal it with is going to be this true oil like I said I put about six to eight coats on there but we'll go over that a little bit later you're also going to need some steel wool. This is a little bit old, but it'll still work. Um, this is 4 0 steel wool, the finest you can buy. Um, what this is going to do is, in between coats of true oil, it'll smooth down the surface and uh, give it a nice new surface for the next layer to adhere to, and you're going to repeat that process between now, six to eight. What I use to start the sanding with is a contour pad like this. What I found that you know it'll go around these curves real well, and you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it, but it'll start to sand the surface down a little bit. And what you want to do is you want to go with the grain of the wood. See how the grain of the wood's going around like this? You want to sand always with the grain. If you go against the grain, it's going to leave nasty streaks in there, like kind of just cut marks and whatnot, you know, that you're not gonna you're not gonna like very much once you start refinishing it. But you wanna go with the grain all the way around, around the curves and stuff. Like I said, just put light finger pressure on it. You don't want it to go too hard because otherwise you're gonna leave divots in there. Just from the, your fingers, you might sand down like a little wallow with your finger. You see I've got some markings here. I don't want to sand all the way down. I just want to go around those. Stuff like that on a vintage stock, you know, you don't want to mess around with too much. But See how the grain goes on this side? It goes a little bit downwards. So you want to follow that grain pattern. Sand downwards with it. Like that. And we'll repeat this process with the uh, 220 grit and then the 320 grit. Now, one thing that I don't suggest to use is a sanding block like this on gun stocks. Just for the purpose of getting around these curves real nice. This thing is going to leave kind of like... It's going to leave more of like an edge to it you know if you try to use it and I just don't prefer these I mean you can use one if you like but it's not my preferred method I like this because it's flexible gun stocks round this can go round this can't One thing I forgot to mention is when you're sanding do it like this you don't want to sand like this because like I said you know if you put too much pressure on it you might leave some little divots in there with your fingers you'll have kind of like a, a ridge like a ridge in there what you want to do is you want to do it like this with your fingers perpendicular to the stock itself sand like this that way you get a good even pressure with the you know with the pressure of your fingers there okay good thing about these pads is you can I already sprayed it off a little bit but it gets a lot of uh, sawdust in there so what you're going to do is sand dust I'm ready to move on to my next grain of sandpaper. So what I'm going to do is just use a stack cloth just to get some of the some of the other dust out of there. Because you want to start with a clean slate each time. Seems to work a little bit better. And what I do is if I don't have the pad to use, I'll just take 
some 220 grit or whatever grit you're going to use sandpaper and I'll just kind of wrap it around there like that and use the pad you know the same as you would just by itself but wrap the sandpaper around there just put the pressure on there and start going it down again Okay, this is the final stage, and you just want to sand for maybe three to four or five minutes or so, you know, just long enough to get the surface down, you know, again, smooth it out to the next grip. So I'm going to take this 320, and this is where I spend the most time with. I'll usually use it for about 10 minutes or so, and uh, just go all over the stock. That'll give it a really nice, smooth, super smooth, actually, surface to start the um, staining process on. So we're going to go ahead and do that. A little bit of redundancy to this process. You see the same thing over and over again. Yeah, we're just trying to show each uh, step of the process. Chad, what are you doing? Uh, uh nothing, guys. Nothing. Nothing, guys. <laughs> okay. We're going to go ahead and start the finishing process on this gun since it's already sanded down everything. I got all the dust off of it. And what you're going to want to do, this is what I do. I like using this wood conditioner first. What you're going to do is you're just going to take yourself some cheesecloth, get you a healthy amount of this conditioner on here. Okay? And you're just going to wipe this all of the stock, just soak it in. Okay? And just let it, let it soak in real good. You're going to want to put a lot on there. All over the stock. Now what this is going to do, like I said earlier, is going to even the grain out a little bit and it's going to keep it from getting uh, that blotchy look to it when you start staining it. And uh, just going to make it look a little bit better, in my opinion. But just give it a good soak. Okay, so the wood conditioner has been on there for about 10 minutes now. And uh, the instructions on the back say to apply the same within two hours. I just usually wait till it looks pretty dry on the stock, you know. All the excess has been wiped off and it's pretty good soaked in. So what I'm doing now is just stirring up my stain. We're going to use the gun stock finish. And I just use a screwdriver. You know, this was handy laying around. So. Just give it a good stir because you're going to get, if you haven't used it in a while, there's sediment that builds up in the bottom just from the stain particles and whatnot. So you just want to get all that mixed in there. And what we're going to do now is just go ahead and start staining. So what you're going to do with any stain, you're just going to want to just, you know, rub it on the surface pretty liberally. Rub it in real nice and good. Because you're going to wipe off the excess in just a little bit. So just give it a good liberal application all over the stock. Okay, so we've got our stock nice rubbed down. The stain now, just going to let it sit on there for uh, maybe a minute or two. And then we're going to wipe off the excess, and you're going to be left with a nicely stained stock. And if it's not dark enough for you, you can go over it again, you know, as many times as you wish. But usually I only put about one or two applications on there. Go ahead. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off the excess with a terra towel. You're going to want to rub it in real good to get all that crap off of there. All the extra. See, all that's coming off. Oh yeah, that's going to look good. Go okay, so I'm just going to leave it with one coat. This is all the excess wiped off, and as you can see, it turned out yeah, fairly nice for what it is. And this is that uh, gun stock finish, but this was a kind of a dark wood to begin with. It was uh, like maybe a walnut or a Carpathian elm or something like that, like one other user suggested. But it's got some nice uh, flame look to it. But we're just going to leave it at one coat, and now we've got to wait on this thing to dry before we can start the uh, true oil process, so we'll get back with that shortly. Monday, right? Yeah. All right, rolling on.